July 31st, 2012, and this is an annual inspection, checklist inspection, or 100-hour inspection uh, for aircraft destiny. Let me show you the aircraft here. And uh, right off the bat, the, uh, the uh, primer started leaking, so I had to take that off at the beginning. Now, this is a checklist that you can use or not use. You can make up your own and uh, uh, either follow this one or just make up your own as you go along. But anyway, this is the checklist that I use for the 100-hour inspection or an annual inspection. Okay, now to begin with, though, per uh, Appendix D, Part 43, uh, they're saying that you must thoroughly clean the aircraft and engine before you ins start your inspection. So that's going to be the first thing we do. And this aircraft is a little dirty. It's been been setting for a while. So it really needs a, a good thorough cleaning. And then we'll start our inspection. Now you can use uh, any kind of cleaner you want. There's 409. Uh, then there's wax. Um, armor all, whatever you want to clean this aircraft with, that's, that you can use. Now on top of our checklist, the owner also has a few things that he wants checked. Uh, he wants also checked, and I see the first thing is chute lines. So I'm not quite sure what is going on with the chute lines, but we'll have to really take a look at that. He has some nicks in the propeller, which we'll go around and, and show you how to do that. Uh, check the prop guard and the fuel primer you can see I've already removed that that thing was leaking the console is real loose So we need to check that again his brake uh, his front brakes, which are actually band brakes So you can see I guess those are not holding it very well and So we're going to check those it says the strobe is not working and the CG it needs to be adjusted because he's landing with uh, nose up all the time and dragging the back. Okay, we've thoroughly cleaned the aircraft. Our next is we're going to check the nose wheel and steering arm of the nose wheel, turn bars, and uh, then the CG tubes, see where they line up. Then the next uh, inspection will be to actually uh, all the frame bolts, fasteners, and all the connectors. So we're just going to go through and the way we do that is actually touch and feel every bolt, every nut, make sure nothing is loose. And so we'll go through and do that. So to begin with the nose wheel, I'm gonna make sure that the tire is free. Seems to rotate. Sounds like it might be grabbing a little bit on the shoe brake here, but we'll check that later. The fender seems to be free. I wanna check the uh, the turn bar here and see if the front moves. It moves very well. Okay, and then the turn bar. Turn bars seem to be free also. We'll check both sides of that. The same way with the other side. Okay, on our checklist is engine switches. We just want to make sure they're free. And that one may be a little loose, so we'll take a Take a little uh, pair of pliers and kind of tighten that up a little bit. Then we want to look at the CG tubes. Make sure that the holes are not elongated. And uh, I believe we have to change the CGs on this anyway. Okay, now we're going to go through the whole aircraft and check every bolt and nut. This one's loose. I need to tighten it up just a little bit. Uh, every bolt, every fastener, every nut on the aircraft. Look at this one, you can just see the play in that guy. So we need to tighten that up. And we're going to check every bolt, every nut on this aircraft. And make sure nothing is really loose that we can't, uh, that we have to tighten. Also, you can see that the frame is kind of bent. Yeah, that frame is bent here, the prop cage. Um, I've noticed that this is loose. We need to tighten that up. This one seems to be all right. This is a little loose right here. We need to tighten that 
tighten that up. And anyway, that's what you do. You go through the whole aircraft, every bolt, every nut, and just kind of make sure that they're not like that, that they're not really loose. So we need to tighten up this whole cage up above here. Okay, now if they're loose a little bit, we just need to kind of take them and snug them down and, and uh, tighten them up. We just don't, we don't want to over tighten them. We're just going to snug them so that you can't turn them by hand. Okay, also on my visual inspection while I'm inspecting this aircraft, I noticed that uh, this is kind of worn, but it's actually just the sleeve. So uh, I don't think that'll hurt anything. It's just a sleeve over top of it. These are getting a little elongated in here. And as you can see, they may need to be replaced eventually. Okay. Even this one, a little elongated. Let's check the others. Okay, these are not as bad as the other side. Look a little better. Okay, and uh, we have one thing over here. We've tightened up all the bolts and nuts, so this is a little tighter. But you can see that's really bent in. Uh, it's hit something. And then uh, there's a hole here. I don't know where that came from. And also, there's a prop strike here. You can see where it's really bent, where the propeller kind of hit it. And the propeller, let's see what end here. And the propeller, you can see, is kind of getting uh, frayed here. So we'll have to repair that also. We do that with uh, super glue and baking soda. And that kind of just uh, close that all in. And then we have to kind of sand it down because it gets really hard fast. Okay, after seeing the prop guard is bent, further inspection kind of shows that the prop guard, you can see right here, let me get a little flashlight. That, that has a crack, and I believe the other one also has a crack. So the prop guard is cracked on the bottom here. Okay. Okay, another step is the uh, fuel cap and oil reservoir. And we're going to check those right now. So while checking out the, uh, we've checked all that in the fuel cap, but we did find, I did find, that this is really loose here, uh, at the bracket holding down the tank. And uh, the other side is tight, but this one is loose. We really need to kind of tighten this guy up as you can see. So that's gonna be fixed. And then uh, fuel system is good. Overflow looks good. We'll go check out the oil reservoir. Now the oil reservoir is attached. Looks like somebody's just attached it with a bunch of <laughs> uh, Ziploc ties. That's kind of unacceptable. So I'm going to replace that with a, uh, a regular metal bracket that will hold this in place. That's just not a good thing. Because these things get brittle and can break. We're also going to check the spark plugs. We'll replace the spark plugs. We're going to replace the gear oil. And uh, we're going to clean the air filters and re-oil them. Replace all the fuel lines and the fuel filter. Okay, I'm also going to check the uh, seat belts for any wear. And where they're fastened into the frame. All right, kind of check that out, make sure that they're, that's okay. So we're going to check all the seat belts, where they're fastened and uh, the connector, even the connectors and stuff. So we'll check all that. Okay, I'm gonna check the main wheel and axles. And what we're looking for in the axle is, if, if they're broken at all, you'll see a little hairline fractures along this fiberglass rod. And uh, you can actually see it. It's, it'll be like, a, like hairline fractures running in the length of it. 
the bolts and all this seems to be in fairly good order. I'll check the other side. Okay, I'm also going to do a compression check and this is on a cold engine so this this is just to verify it from year to year so we'll check uh, next year what the compression is. We're just going to turn it over a couple of times. That's probably pretty good and then we'll go back and we'll check what the compression is. Should be close to 85 or so. Just perfect. Then we'll do the other cylinders or the other cylinder. You only have two. And then we'll write that down. And okay I'm going to replace the spark plugs and we're going to use the Rotec Rotac uh, manual, engine manual, <clears throat> to look up the gap, and the gap is uh, 5 millimeter to 2,000. Uh, an old timer that's even older than me, if you can believe that, that never put in a uh, dry uh, <clears throat> threaded, steel threaded uh, bolt or anything uh, into aluminum without at least putting a little drop of oil on it. So don't put it in dry, always put a little oil in it. Okay, now the owner also, after we put the spark plugs in, wants them tied down. So uh, we put a uh, tie wrap around here and a tie wrap through the back of it and comes up over the spark plugs. We'll do that with each one of these. And then we're going to go to the gearbox and uh, we're going to change the oil in the gearbox. Okay, to change the uh, gear oil, we have to remove uh, the safety wire. And I noticed this doesn't have one, but it should have one coming around here and going through this hole. It also should have one on the bottom of the plug, and I see it does. So we'll, we'll also put one on there. We fill it to this point where it kind of weeps out this hole, and I'll show you that. And then we tighten that up. Okay, we're going to remove this plug, this plug down here. And screw that one and the very bottom plug and the bottom plug once I take it out you'll see what we need to clean it's uh, like a magnet in the bottom kind of collects all the uh, the shavings from uh, steel shavings whatever is off that gearbox and so we need to clean that up also I'll show you as soon as I take that out okay we let the gear oil completely drain this is the plug I was talking about we really need to kind of clean it out because in the center here is a little uh, magnet that we need to get all the shavings off of and then this one will just let it completely drain until it stops dripping okay we've cleaned the uh, plug and as you can see the little magnet inside this was full of shavings and uh, shouldn't have that many shavings also uh, there's supposed to be a washer underneath this and I don't see a copper washer at all so uh, I'll have to put a copper washer on this to stop any leaks that's there. There should, there should have been a washer here. Okay, the top plug also needs a washer, and uh, this is the washer that we found. It's, it's kind of broken, so there's a broken washer on the top, and I'll have to replace that also. Need that washer up there to keep it from overflowing. Not overflowing, but kind of, uh, it kind of missed out a little bit uh, as the engine's turning over. Okay, we're going to add gear oil, gear oil, this gear oil, pins gear oil, to uh, the reservoir here until it weeps out that hole right on the bottom. So I'm going to start filling, and then I'll, okay, as I'm filling now, I've got it filled where it's starting to weep right out the hole, as you can see. And at that point, I will go ahead and... Put the pin, yeah, it slacked off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put this screw in. And then we'll uh, tie the whole system together with wire. Okay, now that I've got all the bolts secured and that uh, weep hole, we're going to secure everything with safety wire. And this particular net bolt has a uh, hole in it, and we're going to secure it right to this, this little hole coming out of the gearbox. And uh, we're going to do it with a, uh, a wire twister, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, we've twisted it here at two points, uh, here, and then in back of the block where it goes through the, uh, the gearbox, and we've twisted it. We'll cut it off right here, and then uh, 
we'll bend it up so nobody gets uh, pinched on this piece of the wire. And then I'll show you how.